I am Otis Roper. I am Brandon Roper. And together we are still the Super Roper Brothers. Hi, everybody. Today we're here to talk to you about, well, the latest in Marvel's opus, um, latest in their ongoing saga, the latest in, well, if we can... Because we're still so excited about Marvel movies, because it's only been, uh, how, many ye- how many years has it been? It's been like three months. Uh, so, <laughs> it's been like three months since the last Marvel movie came out. I mean, We were gone for quite a while. But no matter what happens next, the galaxy still needs its guardians. Hello, we come in peace. (laughs) Come on, Drax, seriously, dude? No, 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 no! Ow! Ant-Man, which I still haven't seen, uh, because I love me some Paul Rudd as a human being. He's a great person. Uh, he's from Kansas City's own. Kansas City's own. And I still was not able to care one bit that Ant-Man was coming out or to go see it. So, I, I mean, I know that that's kind of our, our gig and what we should do, but, you know, Listen, apologies. Not every movie is going to excite our, um, you know, interest. Yes, because we're about quality more than quantity. Yeah. So some movies we're just not going to go see. So deal with it. If you, our people, if you, the people, decide that you want us to see certain movies, you say something, we'll go see it. Hey, yeah, listen, we're, we're down. Look, public demand runs it, but we didn't go see, uh, Ant, or we didn't go see uh, uh, Ant-Man because we really didn't, we couldn't be emotionally moved to go see it. We didn't go see Avatar, too, The Way of Water. We sure didn't because I saw Dancing with Wolves. Shout out to Wes Duty. I saw, you know, uh, the I've seen those movies and I know what they are. And it, like the moment that everybody showed up in Avatar One, whooping, whooping and doing like Native American like actual like battle cries, I was like, oh, that's what this movie's going to be. So yeah, yeah I don't care. I'm, I'm sorry, couldn't be moved to care. Yeah. So uh, back to Guardians Three, we took ourselves from our three-month slumber and decided we should go and see this one just to go ahead and kind of wrap it up. It's the, it's the last of the Guardians yeah. movies that yeah. all the actors are going to be doing together. And honestly, I've loved all the Guardians series so far. Like, they, they, they've, they've had ups and downs and ebbs and flows, but they, they each had an emotional core to them that I liked about them. Now, this is where he and I part ways on this. I really liked the first Guardians movie. The second Guardians movie was a masterpiece um the third guardians movie has some great spots in it but i think that the landing could have been executed a little bit different i don't have all praise to give to this series but i will say this um we were entertained um those of you who survived the 80s like i did there's gonna be some parts in that movie that's gonna be some Remember, remember when the dark crystal just get a little bit too dark. Remember in Labyrinth when, when the, the helping hands when it gets just a little bit weird. Remember like when E. T. when they find E. T. in that creek, like the wheelies from a Return to Oz. Yeah, there's moments in this movie that's gonna be nightmare fuel for our kids now, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, and I'll get more on that later on. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's there's part of like you know like the it gets dark in a way that like they're like oh god that's a lot different than the other ones um but like i said we don't part ways too much on our analysis of this movie i think that the movie itself um it, it okay so let's let, let, let's back up let, see how i actually done let's, let's make lemonade let's go okay so um in guardians 3 what you basically have at the who's beginning of the film. Oh, it's who's it starring? Chris Pratt, Bradley Cooper, Dave Bautista, um, uh, Zoe Zaldana, obviously, is Gamora. Yeah, it's Gamora. It's not Gamora. That's the other Gamora. She's the Gamora that's not in this universe, but is now in this universe. Yeah. Apparently, now there's a universe that has neither Thanos. There's two universes now without Thanos. But it's cool because she's really likable. We're going to get to know her and grow in... in Honestly, I didn't have a Wait real... Wait a minute. Let's, let's move on. We've got Vin Diesel with his famous line. Now, this man, listen, this is oh, a Shakespeare. God. This guy right here can deliver lines with such pathos. It's three words. Shut up. It's three 
doggone words. You get paid like fifty million dollars <laughs> to do three words for three <laughs> movies. Okay. I mean, geez, I'm I'm almost just craving the family meme at this point. <laughs> you know, you know what's more powerful than group? Family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, Mr. Diesel and uh, sir, don't listen to him. Hey, if I can say those uh, some three more words beside you and get that paycheck, listen, we I, will do this together. We have we have stressed this. Of, like, I don't blame any actor, and it, it, big ups to him for getting paid. But I'm like this, man. If they hire me to play quarterback for the Chiefs, it's going to be the worst season ever. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to give that same BS quarterback interview at the end of it every t- single game. You know, it was horrible. It was a hard uh, it was a hard, hard game out there. You know, we did what we could. You know, we out there. You know, I just, you know, I, we just didn't execute. You know, we just didn't. I couldn't make plays. You know, six, <laughs> six fumbles in a row. I, I'm sorry, you know, I just uh, we went out say, there. We had I a game plan. I'm not getting football. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not getting football. Uh. Well, you know, you go out there and you give 110% and you want to play good and, you know, you hope you play good. I think we play pretty good tonight. Well, you know, there's no I in the word team and this is a team effort. And I just want to say that I'm really proud to be associated with these fine individuals that I have the pleasure of working with. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. wait. 17 and a half sacks, you know, it's just. <laughs> Crazy out there. I just, just you know, we just good. we just didn't execute. You know, <laughs> say you're not good at football. That's all. That's all you guys say. Oh man, but yeah. So I don't, I don't have a problem. Yeah, uh, and then the bad guy whose name is uh, Chuk Woody Awuji. Chuk Woody Awuji. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Listen, he put up a force field. It sounds. Right? <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. It, it sounds, sounds like I'm using magic. It sounds. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> I was like, I'm here about to Harry Potter curse somebody. <laughs> it sounds sound like you just. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you just trying to get nunchucks <laughs> in Iowa. Wow. Like, I don't know, don't know what. Chuck, what, what, you, what you put in? All right, whatever. All right, that guy. He does a great job as the bad guy. I think he did get a little too. He he fell a little bit victim to the uh, what I call the General Hux syndrome. to the first order and we'll remember this as the last day of the republic supremely oh. my disappointment in your performance cannot be overstated who told people in hollywood that screaming is scary or screaming makes a villain um it, it, like intimidating but that's not what's intimidating when Darth Vader shows up in the original Star Wars A New Hope he walks in looks at the bodies on one side looks at the bodies on the other side and then moves on don't say a word look Darth Vader Darth Vader is the like the, the, the most intimidating Darth Vader ever was was in the Empire Strikes Back and he says there are two two uh, two lines back to back. There's no escape. Very calm voice. Don't make me destroy you. There is no escape. Don't make me destroy you. Bro. Uh, like terrifying. <laughs> like, you don't need to yell. What do yeah. you need to yell for? Don't I'm, I'm don't already destroyed. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already Darth Vader. I've already got you exactly. at a disadvantage, and there's nothing you can do to me. A villain being calm is is as intimidating, if not more intimidating, than them being like you know screaming. And that's when I think he he really shone as a, this character mm-hmm. when he was calm, cool, and collected, yeah. and when his heart wasn't in it. My sacred mission is to create a perfect society. That was good, and I understand like, the whole jealousy thing. And yeah. it's supposed to be a little so. More- that's kind of the the where we. We're starting in this review because we've been all over the place. We acknowledge, but so the the villain basically the the story starts in the past. It starts in the past, like it starts when Rocket first gets abducted and when he's first basically made into what he is. Now I'm not going to go into it in too much detail when we're not in the spoilers part of it. But you learn from the other two Guardians movies basically that Rocket is not. Rocket has been through some stuff. He didn't want to make things perfect. 
he just hated things the way they are. Okay, we've acknowledged that from the first two Guardians movie. He was made into what he is. Trauma! Yeah, and that's what this kind of movie is all about. This movie's underlying theme is trauma and what it does to you. And how your trauma impacts the rest of your story. And that's kind of like the whole narrative of the movie. Which is all good. Everything to do with Rocket's trauma, I thought was handled well. Everything to do with how he becomes, you know, who he is and all that stuff, I thought they did a good job with. The problem is that it doesn't feel like there's a lot of room for other characters to really grow there. There's not a lot of room for the other characters to have any sort of meaningful impact to the story other than their care for Rocket and their desire to save him, which is kind of the overall plot. Rocket gets injured. Now they've got to save him. The only way to save him is to find stuff from his origins. Oh, the origins is the big bad guy who did all the stuff to Rocket in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, he's basically trying to create a perfect society because he's a nutbag, like they always do. Now, <laughs> um, the story about Rocket is fine, but the story that I wanted to see more of is I wanted to see more of Peter Quill. I wanted to see more of Drax. I wanted to see more. This story was fine. And like, let's talk about, like, the lighting, the coloring. This movie is darker than the other Guardians movies, yeah. I, I think, color palette-wise. Yeah, except for that one place they went, like, when they went to, like, the, the city, that's a, the, the spaceship that was kind of, like, living tissue. Yes. And, yeah, and it's weird as it, I mean, it's, honestly, that looked more like a, um, that almost looked to me more like a, a um, like a CW set. Like, it, it looked a little well, like just... Have, they didn't have a cameo from... Uh, yeah, from a, no. a Nathan Fillion and a bunch of other characters who show up and are kind of side characters. There was one character whose body color just kept changing, and that was weird. Like, the girl who was in, like, the little, like, room, her body color kept changing, and that was a little off-putting. I was like, is that a different person? Nope. It's just her body color changing. I think that that's supposed to be her emotional... Things, yeah, you know, I was changing, but that's all good. I mean, I, you know, we could kind of, you can kind of read between the lines on that. That's fine. I've got no beef with that. The problem becomes that, like, like the first of all, another thing, when damage happens to characters in this movie, there was a few times in this movie where a character got injured and like super sad music played, and then like in a minute that character was fine. back on their feet, <laughs> just, just, just chilling. Like, yo, it was just like, oh, oh, like why'd you guys do that? I was like, okay, so that character's dead. Right? Yeah, yeah, dead, injured, gre no. grievously. No, no, back. No, you're all fine. right. You're okay. Sweet. You're good. Oh, we're back okay. in here. All right. No explanation. Hey, you know what will be um, if my characters would have a complete story arc in other movies. Should we go back to that story arc again in I mean, other movies again I and get, again and again? Well, I mean, they kind of do. They kind of do recycle, like, the whole, uh, you know, the whole uh, rocket pushing people away. It starts off with him being a kind of a jerk to Peter, and then he gets injured. Okay. It's like the, the we, beginning of it. Oh, and we didn't talk about, uh, we talk about Adam Warlock. So, listen, no, no, no. I'm, I'm met, listen, y'all wrong for this one. We waited how many years? I mean, it's been, what, since 2017? Yeah, we waited how many years to get to see Adam Warlock? Supposed to be insanely powerful. Supposed to be... this. It's almost like he was supposed to be in Captain Marvel's spot during Endgame. And they pushed him out of that spot. Uh, it's almost like he was supposed to be that super-powered uh, person in that... In that I'm not... Listen... That's yeah. conspiracy. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe so. But I, <laughs> what I say is this: his powers are super. So he's just super strong, super, you know. Yeah, and he can. But he's a and he can shoot energy beams. Yes, uh huh. So Adam Warlock is kind of just general. You know much about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's kind of OP. Um, he's kind of real strong. He regenerates real fast. He shoots like laser beams. But he loves. Stuff. Gold. Oh, wow. Okay, he just happens to be gold. <laughs> not the physical did. substance I gold. Thing with the movies. But, uh, yeah, so Adam Warlock shows up, and he is kind of a joke. He's played by that one guy with the funky eyebrows who's in, like, everything. Who's in, like... You guys uh, are getting paid? Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> dude from We're the Billers. <laughs> yeah, and who, who, like, who, like, actually got older and, and actually got, like, he's actually, like, good-looking now. So that's... Back then they didn't want me, now I'm hot, they all know me. Back then they didn't want me, now I'm hot, they all know me. Back then they... It's like weird, like, I don't know. Like usually like, you know, when you're kind of like the weird looking kid in movies, you, you grow up and you become even weirder looking. 
but like somehow he actually grew into it. And he, he, he actually like yeah, what's his name? Uh, Will Poulter, Poulter, Poulter. Like I call him the we're getting you guys are getting paid guy. Is it chicken? Is it poultry? Wow, it's get, wow. It's like almost poultry. I'm wow. just wondering. Is it? He went there, folks. Does it mean like chicken? Play on words. Anyway, so no, seriously. <laughs> Uh, so Adam Warlock shows up, and he's kind of played as a joke, but he's strong AF. He's played as, basically, they took him out of his, like, cocoon thing too early. So he has the brain of, like, a, a developing child. He's almost like a replicant from, uh, from uh, Blade Runner series, for those of you who know what that is. For those of you who don't, what are you doing? Get on it. Yeah, you've been on our channel how long? Say it. We've been recommending Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049 for, like, ever. Just watch it. Blade Runner... Is a good movie that had a lot of good iconic stuff in it. Blade Runner 2049 is actually a fantastic film. Like, all the way through. Not just Harrison Ford sitting around drinking and saying enhance. Now, <laughs> this being the final Guardians movie, I will say it does close on a satisfactory note. I do feel good about how it ended. I don't feel let down or... Had my heart, my guts ripped out about a certain character didn't get what they should have. Like, uh, I kind of felt that way. About which one? Not like the, the character. I was just like, well, that's it? it? It felt like it was just like, I felt like I was like, well, I was ma waiting for more of a thing. I was waiting for more of a thing at the end. Like, I was like, where's the heart of this? Because that was the thing about the other two I movies. I watched my childhood heroes get systematically like written out of existence this is okay i watched luke skywalker yeah i watched indiana jones i've watched oh, you haven't seen the new one yet. i ain't there ain't no new indiana jones we're going movies. to see that there ain't no one. indiana jones movie <laughs> right no more we have to go he wrote off he wrote off into the sunset with henry jones senior and Marcus Brody. We're going to watch <laughs> The Dial of Destiny. And that was it. And then we're going to tell the people about it. Mostly because we want to, if we can save somebody, then I want to save it. If it's actually Listen, good, if I want to tell you. If you the people want me to go see this movie, I'll do it for you. But only for you. I ain't going to out of nobody else. That's somebody got to ask me to watch that movie. I became a history teacher in large part because of Henry Jones. Temple of the Crystal Skull. I, listen, it, it wasn't... It, uh, it was Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and I don't acknowledge that that movie exists. I refuse to call it a kingdom. What? Oh, yeah, <laughs> shouldn't have been anything. It's the worst movie. It should have been nothing. Worst movie ever. We've acknowledged. Now, <laughs> let's get back to Guardians Three. There's only one thing that I wanted more, and the relationship I wanted to, to be more. Um, I don't know. Just you didn't have to handle it so mean. It's a situation with. Uh, Zoe Saldana's character, Gamora. I mean, yeah. I, I, I get what they're doing and why they did it. And I kind of do... Like, I thought that the way that they kind of handled Peter's grieving, it was played a little bit too jokey for me. Man! Like, there were some times when they got serious, but then there was, like, most of it was like, oh, I'm not her, da, 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 da. and he was just like, you know... Yeah. And he just gets to be real sad on screen. It was like... I'm like, that's not ha ha stuff, y'all. Yeah, you get to, you know, it's so so like, funny he's the way that she's really grieving, the crushing death. his soul again. Met a girl, fell in love. And that girl died, but then she came back. <laughs> came back and total. <laughs> oh please, he left out some important information, but that is the gist of it. <laughs> So when it comes to what they did well, what is something that you really enjoyed about the film that you go like, this is a positive step forward, I'm glad what you did? Yeah. Okay, well, I thought that what they did well was when they showed, like I said, everything to do with Rocket's trauma was handled well. Um, I liked that they fleshed out a little bit of, like, you know, kind of the background between uh, Gamora and how they handled her as a different person. That is not the Gamora from, you know, Earth, I don't even know what Earth to call it, Earth 1, Earth Prime. Or C-137, if you watch Rick and Morty. I don't know. doesn't matter. It's just, she's not the main timeline Gamora, and she does not act like her because she does not have her memories. Even though she's the same person, like, and has, like, the same sentiments, she did not go through what Gamora went through. If you remember, she that Gamora hadn't even fully left Thanos yet. She hadn't had those events that made her fully revolt against him, so she wasn't 
Like, she didn't have the same gung-ho spirit that everybody else had. So in this one, she's like a ravager and all this stuff. But I thought that that gives the character some breadth, some depth a little bit. Not a bad job. I understand that we're doing things different because it's a different character. I just go, seeing a character get emotionally damaged over and over again. Whoever it was that you were in love with, it sounds more like her. Her? Knock it off! What? Just never noticed how black your eyes were. They were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He, he picked a pretty set. Yeah. Because it's funny. Yeah, that was... Isn't funny. That was here's how I'm gonna let you know it. It, it, it's, it's not funny at all. If the... If it had been opposite, yeah, Peter they wouldn't have done that. Peter if, Quill is allowed to, and I, I will say this: then this doesn't like this isn't about like you know, this isn't some political diatribe about gender or non any nonsense like that. But they couldn't have done this with Peter Quill making those jokes about Gamora. Oh my! Like, it would never have worked in the opposite way. Peter be like, hey, by the way, I'm not that dude. Yeah, now if you excuse yourself. me, I'm going to go out here and find a bunch of other chicks. Bye! Like, like, oh my goodness! Jeez, like, that's kind of mean spirit, and Peter. So I just feel when it came to Gamora, I didn't have a good as feeling as I wanted. Now, I understand, real life isn't like the movies. That's why we go to the movies. Yeah, escapism. We're trying to escape. I want to see where the guy does get with the girl, and they do it up right off in the with the bag of gold, and they do they do succeed at whatever yeah. like plan you're like yeah because you know, in real life taxes it, bro <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> on time give me my money I said hey and you tell me how much you made even though I know it because I also got that document here too. Shh. Anyway, oh, yeah. uh, the other characters that I wanted to see explored, and, and here's the thing, we got caught up in kind of rocket mode. This is my one gripe that I have yeah. with Guardians 3 is that we got caught up in rocket mode. I've already had his, um, I don't need to know the specifics, I've seen his character arc how many different times. He's unlikable, he pushes people away because he doesn't want to get to know them. Yeah. They care about him anyway because they're family, the credits roll, we've seen this how many different times. I've seen, and what what I think is kind of good about this movie and what it does well is in the tragedy that happens to him, and it is an absolute tragedy what happens Bruh. to Rocket. But a detailed, like dark, dark, yeah, dark. Yeah, this is not like tragedy. that. That's one of those things where it's like you got to use your judgment as a parent. Like, do you want to take your kids to see this? Because there is actual animal torture and experimentation in this film, and they show. I mean, like there are some creatures in here who've been like modified and it is terrifying yo, it is like horror like that that rabbit yo there's stuff that we saw in the 80s in movies like hey listen it was the 80s uh and here's what a uh, jim henson actually yeah. was quoted saying he said the kids need to experience fear when they're young so that when they're get older it doesn't freak them out as much i'm paraphrasing but that's basically what it was this movie will achieve that effect yeah um and you know what so, so be it could i tell you what um, having watched E.T. or the Never Ending Story or yeah. like you know, any other any other movies where like there's some straight up childhood trauma, Artex, like yeah. yo, yeah. Like, there's yeah. there's there's heavy things in movies, and we shouldn't just you know you shouldn't try to raise your kids in this in, the, in a imaginary bubble. bubble world where yeah. like you know Glinda the Good Witch is just you know sitting in there with you, just oh everything's lollipops and rainbows, you know better. All right, the real world is this tragedy. It's dark, but this but, film it, it it's gonna do that. So just be aware that like yeah. there will you're not gonna come out like unscathed. You're gonna hit. It's gonna hit you on some emotional. And level. the one thing I will say about that is they just don't warn you about that pre movie, and that is something that I really wish they would have done. Drax, Drax the Destroyer, still a joke. Drax the Destroyer. Can I get? I mean, I I know you. You're, you were dad. I know, like, I, any of the other people, any of your culture, anybody else I get to see, we never get to see any, any other than... I mean, you could tell, and this is the thing about this movie and kind of why it is the shape it's in and why you can kind of tell. This movie was, all right, we need to get done. Like, Batista's out of his contract. Pratt's out of his contract. Or maybe, I don't know, I think he might be Star-Lord again sometime in some other movie. As long as they pay him. I mean, but, like, 
these people are they're they're done. Like I think Zoe Zaldana is kind of out of it. What does she need money for? She's got two Avatar films under her belt. Yeah, <laughs> if, she, if, she's if, somewhere. She, if she took one percent of the gate, she's good. Zoe <laughs> Zaldana don't know what currency looks like anymore. No, because like, I mean, think about it. Like how many film franchises is she in? She's in three Star Trek movies. She's in like five Marvel movies. She's in, like I mean. She got bread. She's she's in like three of the most successful. Like if she gets in Star Wars, she's gonna be in all the successful like freaking franchises of all time. Well, all that just being said, I wanted to see the other characters. Uh, I forgot the character who replaced Yondu. I'm sorry. He, he's been great the entire Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. franchise. Yeah, but, he's been great. Kind of goofy guy. No, oh, Cap. No, they just take him and made him into an eternal joke because he, he can't get the whistle right. But no, I think I I, I his arc. And, and he even had an arc in the second Guardians. Yes. Like, he was trying to voice displeasure, and it ended up cost, causing a mutiny. And you could see the emotional toll it took on him. You know, because at the end, he was trying to get Groot to go get, you know, the Finn. And Groot never got the Finn. It was him who yep. brought that Finn to Yondu. Because he knew what he did was wrong. Yeah. See, that's what I'm trying to talk about in character development, plot, and whatnot. And so when it came to the payoff... I just wanted a a a better payoff, but I have seen mean spirited before, which is why I will take this movie as not being mean spirited. It is because I've seen Transformers once again, eighty six. I watched them. I watched the life flicker out of Prowler's eyes. I watched him die in the screen. I know mean spirited movies when I see it. This was not one. It just didn't have as much payoff because they had to turn in the assignment. Remember when you was in high school and you had a, uh, you had a really cool premise for a story and it was awesome and you were really excited writing it? Crap, it's due tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, and they all lived happily ever after the end. Like, yo, they was in the middle of a, of a dance. Yeah. You're like, what, <laughs> what happened? Like, yeah. Yep, yeah. I, 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 uh, I got to turn it in. Yeah. You they can, had to turn it in. You could feel the quick hand on the wheel at this in this part of this. You could kind of tell because James Gunn is done. He's also done. He's going to the DC. Like he's running DC now. Listen. Like he's essentially doing the DC like universe now. He'll be he'll be making remaking Superman again. DC for the- needs a hug and a whooping. Y'all need prayer and fasting. No. Y'all need whatever. Listen, I'll tell you what. D- DC needs the same thing that Marvel needs. Give it back to the nerds. Who care about the material? Ebombe. When you watch the first, uh, when you watch the first Avengers, like the first phase of Marvel, like the first three phases of Marvel, Man. you can feel the comic book grease, Just the the nerdetry, the the there. words. You can feel it in, in what they're doing. They are following those comics and they're, and they're making sure. Hey, they, I, I know. I, I bet all my money. Every single one of the of the original like trilogy of all that stuff had a consultant that was for each character. That was for each character. Uh, uh, Hulk wouldn't do this. Uh, 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 Captain America wouldn't do that. Uh-huh. Or uh, 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 Iron Man, this is outside of his realm. He wouldn't do something like this. You can see it. You can see it in the overall script writing. And that's the problem that they have with this with this new phase of the Marvels. They're just kind of doing stuff. That's what we're saying when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, does this movie break any new ground? No. no, you've seen it before, okay? It, it, but it's going to be a story with a happy ending that's not too memorable. It, it, and look, it's great for your you, like you taking your kids. You want to see this for closure? Get your closure. Take your kids to it. Watch out. They're going to be some kind of scary stuff. But it's a good thing. I don't regret going and seeing this movie. Yeah. The only thing I regret is when you grow and love a character over years, which we are invested in these characters. Yeah. I just want them. You ever read a character and you want them to be okay yeah. at the end of the story, at the end of the journey? You're like, I want them to be rewarded for all the stuff that they've gone through. Well, not everybody got that. Not everybody gets that. But I don't want that in my kids' movies no more. Well, I mean, that's you. This, this is your issue with this. My issue with this story really was I was waiting for the overall because this is what this this franchise has been known for is the emotional payoff for a character. Like like the emotional, like in the first movie, it was Peter Quill, you know, take my hand, and he's reaching his hand out, yes. and he sees his mom, but it's her, it's, yes. it's Gamora, so he grabs her hand. That's an emotional payoff for something the character's been through that's dealing with his 
past. The second movie, it was you know Yondu. Yondu. It's Yondu. Yes, I mean that had we like our fa- we lost our father in 2015, and like late 2015. So when this movie came out, like we went to go see this movie. I know I wasn't okay in the theater <laughs> having watched that. You know, like that's it's a great. It's very poppin', y'all. It's a great narrative when you can see what happens to a character and what happens to. I mean, because Yondu at the beginning of Guardians, did you really care? No, he oh. was just kind of a thug from the first movie. But when you see it behind and what and and, and they've done it and, and even that Christmas special harken back to it. I love y'all do. Is anybody who can say this on screen and keep a straight face? Wobbly boobly. When he walks in that dude, it was intimidating. Yeah, that dude. Oh, yeah. Wobbly, wobbly, bo- <laughs> say, say nonsense. Judy Moore just speaking nonsense as, as, as intimidation. Yeah. As an intimidation factor, I'm wibbly bubbly. Bruh, I, I just you know love. how tough he is. Now, here's what I. When Yondu has his redemption arc, it's done. It's done. Yeah. It's done. There's no more. You know why? Because it's done. I don't need any more of that. Rocket Man. <laughs> I how, mean, how many? Not, not, I'll give you that because that, because Yondu is the person, but Yondu is actually on, on his way to making that arc. He hits that arc with Rocket. What are you laughing at me for? Uh, you can fool yourself and everyone else, but you can't fool me. I know who you are. You don't know anything about me, loser. I know everything about you. I know you play like you're the meanest and the hardest, but actually you're the most scared of all. Shut up! I know you steal batteries you don't need, and you push away anyone who's willing to put up with you, because just a little bit of love reminds you how big and empty that hole inside you actually is. I said shut up! I know them scientists what made you never gave a rat's ass about you! I'm serious, dude! Just like my own damn parents who sold me, the old little baby, into slavery! I know who you are, boy! Because you're me. (laughs) What kind of a pair are we? Like, (gasps) Yondu is having all of these different things, these different, like, revelations in the movie, you know? Like, and and I I, I appreciate that. I thought they did a great job of it. Even even with, like I said, the Christmas special. I, I really did like Guardians of the Galaxy for this. My problem with Guardians of the Galaxy 3 specifically is... They don't do that. There's no core of this that's like, here's that emotional, like, the, the emotional reverb back through what, what happened previously. The only thing that happened previously was Rocket was tortured horribly. And I guess the, the reverb is that he doesn't, they don't kill the bad guy. Spoiler alert. They don't kill the bad guy. They take him to jail or something or do they just leave him on a ship that exploded i don't know <laughs> like i can't remember did they leave him there see you can't even <laughs> so remember they killed him anyway what happens to the, the, they're like no we're not gonna kill him this we're gonna let the explosion do that comic everybody did the fatigue <laughs> at its finest i can't remember how this bad guy dies yeah i mean I, i'm pretty uh, sure they he didn't die they just left him on the ship or did they kill him because he tried to like pull a gun on him or do something dumb i don't know See? Honestly, see, I can't recall. See that right there? That's I what I'm talking about. I can't like recall. Stuff. Now, my, now, now, one beef. I will give this movie. Yeah, if we had to rate it. If we have to, we had to rate it. I don't know. Uh, I can't give it higher than I can't give it higher than three. And, and yeah, I can't give it higher than three stars. And and even that, I feel like that is generous. Like two point seven five repeating. I, I would have. <laughs> Given this movie four stars, except for one thing right here, and I'm about to hit this with the spoiler before I say it. You ready? Spoiler alert. Just from just right here. It's one thing. All these movies, Peter Quill done had his rocket boots and his helmet. The whole series. You ain't had wrong. his rocket boots and his helmet. In every movie. And in every movie. And the time that it would have been really convenient for your boy. To have his rocket boots and helmet. In fact, that's what we made the, the second point really about the second the, movie. That was really this. That was really stupid. Like that's really convenient <laughs> for for this. Hey, we're doing it again. That we're doing was, it again. That was we're really do stupid. Do that, you're you're not wrong. That is indefensible. You're wrong for that. That's just indefensible. That's like being like Iron Man ain't got no armor. 
Because James Gunn responded, quote, it's in his desk drawer in nowhere. He had to get out of there fast, as you know. And for the next question, people ask, the rockets that clip onto his boots are far inferior to the jetpacks Rocket has made them, so they're not around at all anymore. That explanation was brought to you by Weak Sauce. He's not really Iron Man. Yeah, he's not. I mean, I guess they kind of did that in Iron Man 3, but when he was regular man, like half the movie. Yeah, Iron Man. And then he got the thing taken out of his chest, which didn't matter anyway because he just had it again in Infinity War. Yeah, you know, you know <laughs> Iron Man 3, you're all your favorite He did, I destroyed all my suits and then made him again because I'm um, Robert Downey Jr. I talk fast. Oh, I'm just going to talk fast. Don't talk fast. Wrong. Build, build, build new robots. New robots. Anyway, so. Trevor Potts, Trevor Potts, Trevor Potts. Guardians 3. <laughs> Did you see it? Do you want to see it? Are you trying to see it? Are you trying to talk about it? Like, talk in the comments. Maybe you saw something there that we didn't see. I maybe. mean, a lot of people have liked this movie, and I can't say that they're wrong for liking it. I just, the reason I, like, I, honestly, at this point in Marvel, I think of it as, like, one 35-hour-long movie. Like, it's just, they're all part of the same story. So if you're not hitting those emotional points, then, to me, it's just kind of a miss. So that's that's really all I got. Um, you guys probably should do this thing that we say, uh, what's it called? Uh, like. Sharing. And subscri subscribing. Yeah, it would help. We'd appreciate it. So, yeah. And, and here's the thing. We got a lot of people out there that love us and a lot of people to see, uh, you know, I've been recognized a couple of times, which is weird. You know, uh, I th appreciate everybody that does like, share, and subscribe. If you really do like us and really do care about this channel, just sharing this will change the algorithm for us. It's a game changer. We really do appreciate all the love and support yeah. we've had thus far. Yeah, we appreciate it. So, Once again, I'm Brandon Roper. And I'm Otis Roper. And we are still Super Roper Brothers. No. Brothers. No. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, that girl whose name is almost impossible to say. <laughs> Yeah, the girl who plays uh, the, the girl who plays Mantis. Okay, I don't, I can't, I, I've tried it. I don't know. It, it, it's not Galaxy Quest, but yes, I know it. But it's really hard to say her name. Um, and who else is in this? Um, I, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say her name. All right, I just admitted it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's it's, it's Tom, which is French, and then the last name is like Clement, Clement, Clement Dave, Clement Dave, Clement Dave. Word is, if you say her name correctly out loud four times, your furniture will start floating around your house. Oh, don't, don't do this. Don't oh, it. Her name is Palm Clement or something. Okay, whatever. It's fine. And yeah, she plays Mantis. And then who else we got? That explanation was brought to you by Weak Sauce.